Welcome back to another video. My viewers and my subscribers, no respect. Now, in today's video, I am going to be talking about foundation engineering. Now, as it relates to foundation, the foundation of a building or the foundation of any structure is the most critical part or aspect of that structure. It is responsible to carry the weight of the structure or the loads of the structure or the impending loads of the structure. In other words, the gravity loads, the wind loads and the earthquake loads. Now, let me give you a little history of where foundation engineering is coming from. Foundation engineering dates back to around 10 to 15,000 BCE, before the Common Era. And that dates back to the ancient Egyptians or ancient Kemet. And that structure is known today as the Pyramids of Giza. When I was doing the foundation engineering course as an upper master's course, the first PowerPoint slides that the professor put on the board was the pyramids of Giza to show where foundation engineering is coming from. So for those of you who think that Africa has no history, there it is laid out, the pyramids of Giza, which was built under King Khafu. So foundation engineering is really the responsibility of the geotechnical engineer and how the geotechnical engineer come up with the depth and the weight of the structure the structural engineer provides the geotechnical engineer with the loads of the structure and the responsibility of the geotechnical engineer is to find a bearing strata that can carry those loads safely and uniformly across the soil without any stress, minimum stress. So there you have it. That's the introduction to foundation engineering and I'm going to be elaborating some more. The foundation the definition for a foundation is that it is the part of an engineering structure that transmit the structure's forces into the soil or the rock that supports it. So what that means is that the weight of the structure is transmitted to the footing and the footing spreads that load evenly across the soil with minimum stress. Now the classification of foundation, foundation is categorized in two aspects. There are deep foundations and there are shallow foundations. Now how do you know when there is a shallow foundation as against a deep foundation. Now, the formula for that is that for a shallow foundation, the depth of, the depth of footing and breadth ratio is less than four. That's, that is for shallow. And for deep, the depth breadth ratio must be greater than four. And B, here just stands for the width of foundation. So when you divide the depth of foundation by the width of foundation, if that value is less than four, then your foundation is shallow. And conversely, if you divide the width of your foundation into the depth of foundation, and the result is greater than four, then you're dealing with a deep foundation. So the depth-breadth ratio is what is used 
to determine if the foundation is shallow as against if the foundation is deep. Now, now in designing of a shallow foundation, there are two main characteristics or two main features of that foundation that the engineer must take into into consideration and that is the soil's bearing capacity now the soil's bearing capacity must be of such that it can carry the weight of the building and the second feature is sediment and that is known as differential sediment and immediate settlements. I'm going to be elaborating more on these terms so as to provide clarity. Now the bearing capacity is the ability of a soil to support the load of a structure without sheer failure. And the settlements is the tendency of a soil to deform under the applied load. And I'm going to show you what settlements is so you can have a better understanding. There is a term that we use in foundation engineering where it is known as floating foundation. Where you can evaluate the weight of the soil if you can come up with the bearing pressure of the soil then you can know what weight can go on that soil soil basically have a unit weight of 110 to 120 pounds per cubic feet so i'm going to have some calculation to demonstrate how that works There are two modes of failure in foundation that the engineer has to contend with and as I've mentioned to you before and these modes of failure are settlements due to differential settlements and immediate settlements and I'm going to give you a demonstration of what differential settlement is and what immediate settlement is. Now, settlements can cause minor damages such as cracks in your walls, floors, windows, door, etc. So, you won't get major, major damage when you're dealing with settlements, although it is a concern. But the type of failure that the engineer is mostly concerned with is bearing capacity failure in other words the soil must have the bearing strength that can carry the weight of the building or the weight of that structure so the bearing capacity failure can cause major damage that can lead to total collapse of your building and you do not want that so you must at all times try to build on soil that is strong and if you're going to be building on soil that is weak then you have to employ other types of foundation which is a raw foundation or a deep foundation i am going to be covering all of those and give you a comprehensive outlook on foundation engineering so just keep tuned so the differential settlements I'm going to give you a demonstration of what differential settlement is in your building so if you have let's say this is your building this is your footing of your building and this is another part of your wall 
So, so that is your building. Now, your differential settlement, if the soil beneath the footing is of such that this portion of your footing drops. So this portion of your footing settles lower, lower than this. So there's a difference in terms of your settlement. And let me show you now, tie this up with immediate settlement. So when you excavate your trench to put your foot in, right? So this is the soil beneath the trench. When you excavate that depth, usually this depth is a strip foot in, three feet, zero inches. So when you excavate three feet, zero inches down into your soil, because at this level, the soil is used to carrying a certain amount of weight. So when you remove that, when you remove the soil here, when you remove that soil, the soil here is going to move up. Because it is like a sponge. It was under pressure or under load. And when you, when you remove the load, the sponge is going to move up. So that is similar when you excavate your foundation. The, the soil at the depth that you excavate is going to move up because the weight of that soil has been removed from that level. So the soil is going to move up, right? And since the soil is going to move up, when you, when you pour your foot in here, when you pour your foot in, when you pour your foot in, that soil, soil that moves up, it's going to eventually move back down under the weight of the footing. And that is what we call immediate settlement. So when you put the, the weights of the footing on that soil, that soil is going to move down. So that is what we call immediate settlement because when the soil moves down, it's going to settle at a certain level. Now with differential settlement, the settlement is the difference the difference in settlement is going to occur over a period of time so as the stress or what we call fatigue start to take place in the soil if the soil cannot be with it the footing is going to move down the footing is going to move down and, it's, and let's say the soil here at this on this side is stable and this side the soil is not stable so the foot in here will move down while this portion of, 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 of the wall is going to remain stable. So it's a, there's a difference in terms of one side of your building settling before the other side of the building and that can cause cracks in your building. Now, as I said to you before, when it comes to, when it comes to bearing capacity failure, that's a major failure. You do not want to have bearing capacity failure because that can lead to total collapse. And I do not know if you have seen the collapse of that building in Florida. I think it was a month or two ago where that condo in, in Florida collapsed. And it was because of structural failures, differential settlements in the soil or bearing capacity problems that caused that building to collapse. So that is it for um, this video. I hope you stay tuned to this series. So I'm going to be doing some foundation design. I'm going to be doing some footing design, of, some design of strip footing, design of deep foundation footing. I'm going to show you how to calculate the bearing capacity of your soil. I'm going to show you how to calculate the vertical effective stress in your soil. So stay tuned for this video. And for my regular viewers and subscribers, you know what to do already. 
and if you're watching my channel for the first time you know just to subscribe hit enough notification bell and leave a comment in case you do not understand anything and i will see you in the next video enough respect and take care of yourself